In this lesson, we're learning about the scientific method. The scientific method is how we know what we know in science. It's a systematic method for observing and then testing those observations in a systematic and, and scientific way. Let's take a look at the main steps in the scientific method. First of all, we are always going to make an observation. And so we observe. And so as an example, an observation might be something as simple as you go out to your car one morning and notice that it doesn't start. That's just a simple observation. Uh, it doesn't have to be something in the laboratory necessarily. The scientific method is a way that we solve problems. And here you have a problem. Your car doesn't start. And so that's a simple observation, but it doesn't stop there. The second step in the scientific method is we make a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is, is a possible explanation of observations that we make in the natural world. Sometimes it's called an educated guess. And so, for example, uh, a hypothesis uh, in our situation where the car doesn't start might be something as simple as saying, uh, well, perhaps uh, there's something wrong with the battery. And so that's just a possible explanation. Sometimes in science, these hypotheses will take the form of an if-then statement. If this is happening, then this is the explanation. You know, th th that can be your, the form of your hypothesis. In the everyday world, it might not be in that format. And the next thing that we do after we make that hypothesis is we test it. And we test that hypothesis using an experiment. And so in the everyday world, performing an experiment might be something as simple as just looking around and seeing what's going on. In the, in the science laboratory, it might be something much more complicated than that, that we have to actually test and write out a procedure and, and, uh, and carry out uh, that procedure and then re record some data and find out if our hypothesis is right or not. In the case of our car being broken down, if we think there's uh, something wrong with the uh, battery, well, we can carry out the experiment. Just check the battery and see if, if there's something wrong with it. Maybe you check the battery and find that uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with the battery. So what do you have to do in that case? Well, sometimes if your experiment does not support the hypothesis, you have to be willing to change the hypothesis. And so you may have to go back up here and come up with a different hypothesis. Our battery's okay. Maybe our new hypothesis is we're out of gas. And so you can test that experiment using, or test that hypothesis using an experiment. So you check the gas gauge, and you find maybe that uh, your gas tank is empty. And so your experiment uh, can either support the hypothesis or not, and you can change the hypothesis as needed. Well, eventually, you may be able to come up with a theory. And a theory is basically a, a hypothesis that has significant experimental evidence to support it, especially over a long period of time. Now, we have to be careful about when we say theory in science, because sometimes people say, well, it's just a theory. Well, that's not really how it works. Most theories have significant experimental evidence backing them up. Uh, for example, uh, the theory of gravity tries to explain why it is that when you, you drop something, for example, it falls to the ground. And so that's a, that's a theory that tries to explain what's happening. There aren't too many people out there today that are uh, that are saying, well, gravity is, is just a theory. No, it, it's our best explanation for why uh, things fall down whenever you, you drop them on the Earth's surface. And so there are lots of theories, and generally theories have a large body of evidence, uh, and as we see here, they have been tested quite a bit. So in the case of our car breaking down, I suppose we could say our theory is uh, that the gas tank is empty. And so the fifth step is take action. And so in the case of our car being broken down, our taking action might be we go to the gas station and, and buy some gas for our car. And then we drive off. In the case of a scientific uh, uh, observation or a scientific theory, taking action might be something as simple or something as complicated as writing a paper to be published in a scientific journal and letting other scientists read about what you've done so that they can carry out the experiment also and test it as well. Sometimes taking action might be going to a scientific conference and talking to other scientists about what you've discovered. Maybe they can 
can uh, try to repeat your, your experiment. See if their data uh, backs up your, your observations, your theory, or if it, uh, if it doesn't. So the scientific method is a systematic way of testing observations. The scientific method is not just something that scientists do. Uh, if you're planning on becoming an auto mechanic, for example, auto mechanics carry out the scientific method every day to find out why a car isn't running, what's wrong with the car. They carry out this same, uh, the same set of, of steps. If you know, they, they test something, if that doesn't work, they try something else. Also, a doctor will do this. Uh, if you go to the doctor, they're going to make observations, try to figure out uh, what's wrong with you, uh, make an educated guess or a hypothesis. They're going to experiment. They might run some tests on you, take your temperature, take an x-ray or something, see what's going on. And then when they come to a hypothesis that's very well supported, we can call that a theory, they're going to take action. They're going to give you a, a, a medication or maybe do surgery or something, and that's what doctors do. And so there are lots of people, not just auto mechanics and doctors, all kinds of people. Uh, maybe you carry out the scientific method in your everyday life as well. Well, looking at these five steps, you might notice that there's one thing that's not on this list of five steps, and that is a natural law. And we can define a natural law as a statement of fact that applies to many scientific situations. It's a fact. Now, some examples of natural laws might be the law of conservation of mass. Maybe in earlier science classes you've learned about that. Or Newton's second law, the one that says force equals mass times acceleration. Or Newton's third law, the one that is uh, very commonly stated, stated that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Or Boyle's law, which we'll learn about in chemistry. Or Newton's law of universal gravitation that tries to calculate the amount of gravity between two objects. Or maybe even Murphy's law you've heard about in your everyday life. You know, some examples of laws. I have a question for you. Do you think that it's possible for a theory to become a natural law? Maybe after years and years of, of uh, testing and being, uh, being observed that maybe a theory like uh, the Big Bang Theory or uh, the theory of evolution or some other theory uh, may become a natural law. Do you think that's possible? As it turns out, the answer is no. A theory can never become a natural law. And there are some reasons for that. Mainly it's because theories and natural laws have completely different purposes. Here are some of the main differences between theories and laws. Theories state how or why things take place, whereas theories just state what take place. So for example, the Big Bang Theory, a very common theory in science, uh, tries to, to explain how the universe came into existence. It doesn't just say that the universe came into existence. There are laws, like for example, uh, for every uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, Newton's third law. It just says what? It doesn't try to explain why that's the case. It just says what happens. Laws say what? Theories are a how or a why. Theories cannot be absolutely, conclusively, 100% proven. And for that reason, theories, if they're good theories, they really need to be refined and honed and, and sometimes even replaced by better theories. That's what science is all about trying to improve our ideas, trying to improve our explanations of the world around us. Whereas laws can be proven. In fact, we can prove some scientific laws right in our own high school chemistry laboratory. Laws are statements of fact, and very often laws are represented by a mathematical equation. For example, Newton's second law is sometimes written as force, or F equals MA, a mathematical equation, and you can prove that in the lab. And so these are the fundamental differences between theories and laws. But as we can see, theories are a fundamental part of the scientific method. When we say scientific method, this is a systematic way of finding out how we know what we know in science.